I'm an artist. And what I do is paint. And I was fairly successful with my paintings and selling them when I got my art in front of people. But that wasn't very often. Hardly anybody knew me. I was like the proverbial guy who can't get arrested in his own hometown. So what did I do to get myself some attention and put my art in front of people? I would do the usual things that artists would do. I would go to shows, uh, or I would put my art in cafes and restaurants. Not really great ideas, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the picture of the cafe, um, you see, look at, click carefully at the people. They're not looking at the art. When they're together, they're looking at each other. The art's just in the background. Or if they're alone, they're on their computers. So I really didn't have a lot of success with that. And with shows, you see, they're kind of tricky. There's a lot of effort. You have to pay the fees. And if it's rainy or windy, you don't get a lot of people coming. If it's too warm and sunny, they're all at the beach. So it's kind of hit and miss. So what do you do to get attention? Outdoor public art, that's what I discovered, and that was the trick. And what happened with me, and I'll tell you this story, my wife, who managed to keep her <laughs> youthful form through all the years we've been married, she was asked by her colleagues at work, what do you do, do you go to the gym? She says, no, we just walk. So she told me that they were going to go walking after dinner uh, in November, December, and January and to stay in shape. And I said, that's great, but this is a limestone city and everything is gray. And then after Christmas, all the lights come in, right? So it's depressing. What you need is an outdoor art show that's spread around. And she said, the problem with that is it would get uh, vandalized. And I said, freeze it. So I came up with this idea. Uh, 300 pounds of uh, a, a block that weighs 300 pounds, a block of ice that's crystal clear, and it has art inside. And uh, I had one of these uh, placed in front of my lawn, and it got a lot of attention. So some artists approached me and said, can we get involved too? And so we did. So later that month, we got 12 more. So we had 13 of them. And I had to actually go around, because each one cost me $300. So I, had, I, I figured, well, I could get people to pay me $200 for them. So I went actually literally knocking on door to door to businesses and individuals, getting seeing if they would sponsor these blocks of ice. And they would glow at night. It would be really cool. So I went from being the guy who couldn't get arrested in his own hometown to the guy who's selling ice to Canadians door to door in winter. <laughs> so I thought, uh, that was a great idea. Can we do it in the summertime? Because, what, you know, Life goes on, right? When these melt. Uh, so I came up with the idea. We, we called that, by the way, Fwadar, Art on Ice. And so I thought, repeat the idea. And that's what you can do when you have an idea, repeat it, and maybe change it a little bit so that you could take advantage of the rest of the season or, wh or whatever. And that's what we did. So here uh, we have uh, a piece of art that is weatherproof that sits on someone's lawn. And the same idea, we get people to sponsor it. And they get to keep it after. So for $200, uh, we get uh, kind of an exciting outdoor distributed art display. And the cool thing about both of those is we have a launch date, so we invite the media. In fact, for, the, uh, for both of them, especially for the ice ones, the media were bugging me, hounding me, telling me not only did they want to cover it, but they insisted on being there when the ice blocks arrived. They insisted on following me around and interviewing the people. They like, that doesn't happen to artists very often, right? So I actually had to push the media away a little bit, which is really cool. So it became a very popular event event and we launched it and, and it got a lot of coverage. Now, the other thing too is to take that idea even further and, and to make it more exciting. And to do that, um, I came up with the idea of using screens and old wood uh, panels that were going to be thrown in the garbage. And I use that paint, you know, the stuff that's on sale in the back of the hardware store? Uh, or, or just paint that's been sitting around? Well, I use that and I paint with that. So it's weatherproof, so it's art that stays outside. So we're upcycling. So that adds to the excitement. Now, do you want this to happen to your business? Say you're starting a business, and we're not talking about art galleries, we're just talking about anything. Do you want to have a sign like that after about six months trying to give it a go? Of course you don't. Then you have to do something different. Now, one of the things you can do that's different is to stay the same. I know it's kind of weird, but 
I don't know if many of you people might know him if you've been to his store. He's a legend even if you haven't. So I thought, like many others, <clears throat> you know, I confess, with, uh, he was selling LPs for ages, used LPs. But then along came CDs, DVDs, digital downloads and streaming and, you know, this guy should be gone, but no, he stuck to it. He knew his business, and, he, and he's one of the few that stayed behind, and he is the king of his field, and he has this whole cluttered thing. I'm, I'm cluttered, too, every time I'm at my gallery uh, that artists help clean it up, uh, but clutter works for him, and it and endears him to his customers. So... Um, Apply this to other businesses. So think of the status quo. Think of your normal theater, for example. Say you want to open a theater, not like one that shows feature films, but you know, um, maybe foreign films or whatever, or old films. Don't just have a normal theater like all the others where you go in and there's popcorn and there's you know, machines you can play. Try this. This guy's in the middle of nowhere in a small town far away from anything, but people flock to his place. Because when you go in, you don't see the typical things. You actually are in a kind of a museum in the lobby. And that's all old equipment there, old vintage equipment and memorabilia, tons and tons of it. He even has one of those alien uh, uh, statues from one of the movies. So that's an experience he's creating for people, and they'll go out of their way to go to it. Now think about your typical restaurant, <clears throat> excuse me, you walk into a restaurant and you see tables and chairs and maybe some art on the wall. And maybe it's a burger restaurant or maybe it's an Italian restaurant. And can you imagine that restaurant being a different kind of restaurant next week? Well, if you can and the decor won't change, then, you know, maybe there's really not too much exciting about that. All things being equal, people will want the experience and they'll choose that over top of anything else. For instance, they'll say, I want to go to that place where, you know, it looks like you're in Vietnam. Now, this restaurant is well known, I think, to a lot of people. It's a very uh, popular North American chain. I, used, I always love to go there. When I do, I want to sit in that streetcar. And, you know, now, of course, I'll take pictures out and, you know, post them. Um, yeah, post about my food and where I eat and all that stuff. But people like to do that. And it helps the business because their friends see it, right? And they say, oh, what a cool restaurant. I want to go there. So, and if you look up here at the, the I, I guess in this example, it's a little better, but usually the, even the chairs at the same table don't match. And that adds to the, you know, the, the clutter and the, and the mishmash of things and the Tiffany lamps. It adds to the ambience and makes it an experience that people want to seek out. Now, uh, sushi, we've all been to a sushi place, right? Uh, sometimes they cut it you know, right in front of you, in front of your table. Yeah, you know, that's pretty standard. Sometimes they serve it out in the kitchen and bring it to you on a plate. Really boring. This place is kind of interesting because you sit at the table and the sushi is actually floating by. And it's on these little, little boats. I thought that was really cool. So that's kind of an experience. You, and you get to pick your food and depending on the one you pick, you pay that amount. Maybe you might want to pick another and another. It's a great idea. Love it. So... <clears throat> Now, think of uh, the business I'm running, an art gallery. Now, you think of your typical art gallery and it looks like this. This is your status quo for an art gallery. Big windows, you walk by, what do you think you're gonna see in there? Paintings and various art, right? Most people aren't gonna go to the art gallery every day. They say, oh, an art gallery, oh, I don't walk by it. What you want to, you want to expand your audience a little bit and bring in people who actually weren't intending to go to an art gallery. Right? Uh, so this is what we've done. Um, you don't even know what it is. Most people don't even know what it is until they actually get inside the gallery at the end of, of this, this corridor that leads to it. But you see outdoor art. Uh, you see tables where people can eat. It's just it's sort of like shock and awe, right? And uh, here you see a, uh, a lighthouse, right? You see that lighthouse? Uh, that's not a lighthouse. Uh, the place was actually an old alley, and I used the, I had a lighthouse-shaped uh, uh, shed to hide the garbage for the restaurant that was using the alley. And you'll see it better there. And the buoy is not a buoy. You don't get ships in there, right? That's for the grease for the restaurant. Because the restaurant was using this alley before I came along, 
And I couldn't tell them to put it inside because one, they were there before me, and two, they had no room inside. So I said, okay, keep it outside, we'll just disguise it, and then we'll just decorate everything. Landlord, landlord told me, do whatever you want, because I hated the color of the, of, of, of the walls. He said, do whatever you want, so I did. Never tell that to an artist. <laughs> <clears throat> Leverage social media. So in this day and age, you can actually rely on your customers to help spread the word about you. And this is what happens all the time at our gallery. <laughs> this was a model. She asked permission to, uh, to have her pictures taken here. And I said, of course, yes. And then this is one of many families who came. And I noticed they were taking a selfie. So I took a picture of them. And then I posted on Instagram. And then later I saw their post on Instagram. This is one of many. And you notice the Martell Alley sign there? Um, I make sure to make sure that I make sure that, that sign is conspicuous in various places. So you almost have to go out of your way to not get you know, the my name of my business in, the, in your photograph. I was actually, see, I have cameras on 24-7. I was sitting there, I was watching with my wife, who's in this audience right now, and I, we were watching TV, and I said, oh, there's someone in the alley right now, and they're taking pictures. I said, I think we need a sign there, and there, and there, and there. So, and it worked. Now, um, we also disguise the business a little bit. Uh, well, oh, actually, uh, sometimes when you're in business, look out for happy accents. Sometimes your customers will be telling you something that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> what happened in, in this case is there is a blue bike on the left, and it, was, it, it actually wasn't there. It was chained in the middle of the alleyway, and as I was... Um, I, I was working with the alley and kind of tidying it all the way back and I only had art at the front of it where the street was. And people look at the art and then they look at that bike and they'd say, wow, that's a pretty bike. And I'd say, thanks, that's not my bike. And they'd say, whose bike is it? Oh, um, that belongs to one of the tenants. Oh, which tenant? I don't know, she lives here, I don't know. Oh, how much is that bike? I don't know, that belongs to one of the tenants. Oh, where can I get a bike? Like Again, I don't know, I'm not selling art. So I realized that I had to get my own bike because eventually that bike would be gone and it was a real conversation piece and it drew people back. So I got the other bike and then that bike became available because she was leaving and she wanted to sell it to me. So I had two bikes and then I had no place to put them. So I shoved them out on the sidewalk a little bit, just for a moment, and then I noticed people started funneling in. It was actually attracting people because they'd stop, they'd look at the bike, and then they'd go in. And then it's like, wow. And then I thought, okay, an art gallery. Think of this, be creative with your logo. An art gallery, what would you normally see as a symbol for an art gallery? Like a paintbrush and a palette, right? Or an easel. Well, why not a bicycle? And it throws people off but they're attractive. So people come in here and they think they're going into a bike shop or an antique shop, or they don't know what it is, but by the time they get the front door, it's too late. And they're in my gallery. So watch for those happy accidents. Use your creativity for that and your ears. Now, distractive ne necessary. And this is the thing. Some people are not looking for what you're selling. You have a bookstore, or you have a Chinese restaurant, or whatever it is, or a plant store. They're looking for milk, they're looking for eggs. They're in a hurry. Distract them and get them to notice you, but then don't do what I did the first day. What I did, <coughs> excuse me, is people would stop and they'd notice all of this stuff. One lady looked at me like this and she said, what is this? And I said, well, come on in and take a look. And she said, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to tell me what this is before I go in there. <laughs> so I said, it's an art gallery. And this is what she did. She says, oh, I hate art. And she ran this way, literally like, Egh. So obviously she doesn't hate art. But for some reason or another, she didn't want to go in. She didn't want to be embarrassed or she would, yeah, whatever. So this is what I do. The next time someone came in, um, <clears throat> I, they would say, what is this? And I'd say, look down at your feet. And they would look down. They always do, because I point. And then they say, and then I say, that's not brick, that's painted. I painted the ground to look like brick. And I actually did. I got on my hands and knees with a sponge for a month with a special paint, making it look like brick. It's actually asphalt. So she, they would say, yeah, really? And that's not a lighthouse. Really? Yeah, come take a look. By that time, they're in front of the gallery, right? It's just a few <laughs> steps in. So distract the people. So whatever you do, find a way to distract them so they don't realize what they're getting, you know, that they're actually enjoying being in your store. Now think of your typical um, restaurant. You go in, you, you buy your food, and you leave. But sometimes you go in the restaurant, and 
there's no room and they have to clear a table for you. Uh, please sit down here at the front bench for 20 minutes by the door where the cold air is coming in. Or you can buy a drink at the bar. Well, maybe you don't want to buy a drink at the bar. Maybe you want to have a glass of wine at your table. Maybe you don't want to drink at all. So you have to sit there at the front. What if you did what these folks do? It's a chain in the United States. You walk through, it's a general store. You have to walk through the general store to get to the front of the restaurant. And then if the, if the food isn't ready, your table isn't ready, that's okay. They've got your name. I'll just shop down here for a while, right? Oh, this looks interesting. Or if your table is ready, you go sit down, you order, and then you say, gee, and this is what I always do, I saw something interesting back here, right? So you're taking advantage of the captive audience, and you're giving them an experience, and you're upselling, selling more product to them. You may not have a lot of room, but even if you have a small amount, maybe you're not really a special restaurant, but maybe you have customers come in and they say, we were here 10 years ago on our first date, you know, and they would want a souvenir with the name of your, your establishment on it. Think about that. Yes, things like that can sell. Now, collaborate. You're not an island. Uh, if even if you have an, you're competing with other art galleries or other bookstores or whatever, you're stronger together. It's better that all of you talk about art or books or re, or Chinese food than just one of you. Maybe they're better at social media than you are, but and it it just works to everybody's benefit. So don't be afraid to be uh, to collaborate and be uh, working with even your competitors and tell your story. Your story is what makes you important. Your story is what distinguishes you from everybody else. Our story is how we, I took this old alley, and yes, that's Martel Alley, not now, and I, it was really disgusting. No one would want to go down there. It was empty for a long time, and I turned it into this. And this is a winter shot. It's even pretty in the winter. So tell the story about what you've done. Tell a story about how maybe you were handicapped or you were in a car accident and you're starting your business and starting your life again, or how you only source local or support this, or you give to whatever charity, whatever it is, make sure you tell your story so that people are aware of it. Uh, creativity is, uh, is something that doesn't cost you anything. It's one of the uh, assets that you have that is free. And you can even um, in, get input from your friends and others who are creative people and, and use that. You won't have to pay for it. It's the thing that will really set you apart from all of the other businesses because you, when you're starting out in your business, it's that first year. In fact, a lot of the businesses go out in the first six months. So people have to notice you. And then when they notice you, they have to be, they have to say, I want to keep coming here because this person does this or they did that or they support this cause. So make sure to use creativity in your business. That is what is gonna give you the edge. Thank you. <laughs>